live. Awesome. Hey, everybody. Um, happy Monday. Thank you guys so much for being here with me. I'm Jill Buck, Celebrity Artist with Joyco. Um, today's live is a quick one. So I know it's Monday. I know we're all busy, but this live is nice and quick. I'm talking about Joyco's all new Lumi 10. It is 10 minute, 100% gray coverage. And I'm so excited. I have my model Yvette with me. I'm going to show you guys. I'm going to apply and then literally show you guys this product working. Um, so it's pretty easy. If you got 10 minutes, then you need this color. Um, all right. So let's jump into this. Um, so what I prepped Yvette with is a little bit of like a halo shaped highlight. Okay. And the reason I did this is she just needed a little sprucing up, right? She's got, you know, about an inch of grow out of gray. Um, and I feel like our clients come in a lot, right, with this. And, and this is what bothers them more so than even what their face frame is happening with their face frame. So what I've now incorporated in with this new product is this halo-shaped, really fast highlight. So I'm not adding more time into my service. And I'm honestly able now to book a face frame highlight with a toner and a base. And it's all happening in the same time frame, which is huge for us right now in the salon. So in the comments, you guys, if you have heard about Joyco's new Lumi 10, please drop a thumbs up. I'm so curious out there how many of you guys have been trying this, loving this product. Um, everyone that gets their hands into it at the salon so far, I work at 901 in West Hollywood have been obsessed with it. So I'm so excited to be on behind the chair and sharing this with you guys. I feel like it's such a game changer for us in the salon. Um, and you know, we all know we are still recovering, right? From lots of closures. Um, and we just have a lot of clients to see. So if you're able to add this express service into your salon and you're still able to achieve all of this in the same time frame, that's just like huge, right? For our, for our pocketbooks. So I'm going to be just working right off of a basic center part on Yvette. A lot of times in the salon, I work with a, uh, with an assistant. So we get this on, you know, she's on one side, I'm on the other. Um, so we get this on real quick. But for those of you that do not work with an assistant in the salon, what I typically recommend with this product line is you can adjust by using a slightly lighter color, like just one shade lighter in the back than what you do in the front. So that way, if this sits for 20 minutes, that's okay. It's still gonna turn out with the same color that we put on top. That's the 10 minute time frame. Okay, so we're gonna work with our 5N. And we're going to, I'm just gonna kind of clip this. She's got so much hair, so just for some added control, I'm gonna be pulling this up and out of my way. And now another really big thing that I did with her highlighting here is in the foil placement, when we get closer to the top, I can show you guys, I am dropping that foil down so I have space to get that gray coverage in there too. And I'll kind of show you guys what I mean, but this is how we're able to achieve both of these applications in just one sitting. And she's not gonna have to sit with her base for a full 40 minutes. You know, sometimes we get in there and we've foiled our client, we get the base on, and then we're like, you know, ready to rinse the base. And we're like, uh-oh, these foils are not ready, right? So this product has been totally changing that for me, where I feel fully confident that I can get this base on and still get gray coverage from, um, from the application. And then I can just take it off as soon as my highlights are done. That way, this to me, is harder to control than what's going on, right, with, with the base itself. Uh, for some, some clients, we need even a little bit longer. So I would just wait, like hold out until you know your foil placement. Um, the highlighting process is almost done. And then you're gonna be able to get this base on nice and quick, clean application, and then you'll be able to rinse all in one step. So I'm curious, you guys, has so far, who has tried out this color line, this Joyco Lumi 10? Who's tried it? Who is loving it out there? Um, and also, those of you 
that are popping in that comment section. We're going to be doing a, a giveaway during this live and the giveaway is huge. We're doing a Joyco Youth Lock kit. We're doing a Color Intensity kit and a Lumi 10 kit, all for one winner. And the way that you simply enter this giveaway is just leave a comment, you guys. If you have a question, please feel free to ask me. That's what we're here for. I've been playing with this color line for a while now, so please ask any questions. Um, and we'll kind of continue through and cruise with this application. So the Lumi comes in three different color lines or color uh, formulations, okay? So we have the NA series, which is so good. And in addition to that, those, you know, those clients you have that it's, they fade out red no matter what you do right they just whether they're in the sun a lot maybe they don't have good water um maybe they're not using the right shampoos and conditioners for their hair they will benefit from the na series so much so that one i've been absolutely loving in california we don't have the best water so that one i will formulate with a lot um and it doesn't have too much of an ash vibe to it where then you feel like Ugh, it feels too dull when you get into your higher, you know, levels, eights, nines, and tens. Because sometimes that can happen too, where it just feels a little too dusty, right? Um, then we have the N series, which is just magical and can be used on 90% of your clients. And then we have, oh, you try oh, Siri's talking to me. Okay, Siri. Um... Sorry, guys. And then we have uh, the NWB series. Now, the NWB is one of my favorites to mix with the N's. It is one of those things that you can make it as warm or kind of as um, neutral warm as needed. That one I found is such a perfect blend with the N series. Somebody wants to know, when would you start timing it? Okay, so that's a great question. Typically, what I'll do is I'll go through the back on both sides, and I'll just kind of make note of my time from that from from that application. Because if I needed to, let's say you get pulled away, anything like that, right? Where you've got another client going or anything like that, and you get pulled away for a second. If you need to, then you know you can always rinse that back section out. So I'll make note of it and set my first timer. And you yes, can go rinse. Oh my goodness. She's just going off on me today. So that's when I'd start my first timer. And typically this Apple watch of mine is so helpful, but today she's just really acting up and I'll have my first timer going. Then I can kind of watch that time. And then I'll start it again when I am hitting through that crown section, when that entire crown has then been applied as well. Okay, so right in here, you can see how I have my foil dropped right here. So this is to ensure that I make sure I get that gray coverage happening all the way up to that root in between my foils as well. Some of you guys probably do your base first and then your highlight, which honestly, I used to do that too until this product. Now I don't need to do that and I like it so much better because I just feel like I'm getting a better application, to be honest. I, I find that sometimes foiling first, um, you know, you, you get like, it, it's back and forth, right? Then you're like, oh man, well, now is the highlight gonna sit too long, right? With the gray coverage or not sit long enough. But because this is only a 10 minute process time, I know that these need more time than that. So I've kind of switched back to doing my um, subtle little face framing and then a 10 minute gray coverage application. Um, and then also I find that I don't have that really warm happen, that really warm um, area that happens when you're trying to go over the permanent color. If you base first, and then highlight, 
it gets really orange and a pretty gnarly band that happens at the top of your highlights, working on a brunette specifically. So I've really just found this is a cleaner application. Now I can go and wash this all at the same time. And I'll probably, usually what I'll do is pull the highlights, give them a little hit of water, and then I will rinse the entire base out all together. And I haven't had any issues with it bleeding down, running into my highlights, anything like that. Just be mindful, you know, that if you're going to work, if you're working with a highlight in there and you're getting that to a level, you know, uh, eight, nine, be mindful that you have this formula a five, right? Permanent color. So do your best to still rinse those clean. And it just kind of gives you that added little security. Now, if that were to happen to me for some reason, I just use like a good clarifying shampoo. It's gonna be a very fast, you know, um, slight pigment change. It's not gonna be anything major. I don't think you need to go back over it with like a bleach wash or anything aggressive like that. So the way that this product works in the 10 minutes is it has a larger dye load, okay, than what most of our permanent colors have. So keep that in mind when you're formulating, okay? So just think of it as like, let's say you're coloring on a piece of white paper, okay? You go over that once with a marker, and then you go over it twice, okay? You use the same color, but you went over it again, right? So you're adding more color and more dye load into your, your creation, right? Your painting, your masterpiece. So just make sure that when you go to formulate that, yes, I want to match Yvette's natural, but I have to remember that what I'm covering is white. It's not this brown, her dark brown. So taking that into consideration when I'm formulating for her, I don't want her to hair to feel black. Like she's still definitely, she's a dark brunette, but she doesn't have black color. So I want to make sure that I'm formulating accordingly. Now, just like any permanent color, the goal here is make sure you keep this on the regrowth, okay? And that goes for all permanent lines. Um, you don't want to be pulling that down too much unless you are needing to cover an old band. Let's say it's a client you've never done before and she came in with a base that she just really was not happy with then that's when you would go in and go over again with a permanent color so it's not constantly, you know, fading out on her. Um, but for those clients that, you, that are your clients that you're doing all the time, they have flawless gray coverage, right? They, you just really need to be putting this permanent color right on that grow out. We don't want to create bands. We don't want to make our lives harder, right? So being mindful with that. Now, in addition to the extra dye load, the developer you're gonna be using with the Lumi 10 is Accelerator, okay? Let me show that to you guys real quick too. The Accelerator is meant to work with this product and this product alone. So I'm a, I'm a rule breaker, right? I break rules. But what I will say is with this color specifically, stick to the science. The scientists at Draco are seriously, they love what they do. I've met a few of them. Young, beautiful, smart girls that have created and worked on these projects. They have tested this over and over and over again. And so they have found that this accelerator is what works perfect in order to create this coverage. So I recommend you stick with it and don't break the rules quite yet. All right. So I'm, if you can see, I'm up in here now in the foils that I've kind of had dropped. I wanted to give her a little boost of a face frame. So I'm going to drop that down. And I originally did that in my foil placement. So I'm in sure I'm getting coverage in there. 
The other thing too that I want to recommend is do your best to kind of tuck that hair, the hair that you foiled, try to tuck it away in the foil. Okay. So that way you're not worried about your ends coming out. You see how on her, I've kind of tucked her ends under these, these flaps in here. If you have extra coming out, you can tuck that in just to make sure that when that leans back, you're not hitting any of this dark retouch up in here. Okay. And then we're going to do our best to keep our hairlines nice and clean with our clients. Make sure you take the time you guys to go back and clean up a hairline. I know we get work in quick sometimes, but that customer service is so key to make sure that they, the client's not sitting there. You walk away and they feel like, Oh my gosh, I have color all over my skin, especially permanent color. Um, some skin stains more than others. So just be mindful that you're keeping it nice and clean through here. And I'm brushing this back away from her face. Again, that's what she's going to see, right? When she goes and she pulls her hair up, she's going to see all of this in here. So I'm ensuring that I get really, really good coverage. Okay. And kind of picking up all her little baby hairs. She's got that really coarse, stubborn gray hair, right? That just likes to really, really make you work for it. So I'm going to show you guys a little trick once I finish this hairline that I will take a small piece of foil and I will lay it right over the top of these pieces. So sometimes we get that gray hair that's either new growth or who knows, right? Wait, what, what the heck is gray hair doing? It has a mind of its own. So sometimes they just see even like this guy. I don't know if you guys can see that on camera. He's just, he's just chilling, right? Doesn't want to go back with where I just put the color. So after I get this fully applied, I'm going to take another piece of foil and I'm going to lay it right over that hairline to make sure it's helping to lay that hair back. And you can see I'm taking more time on this hairline, right? These little detail things is what matters to your clients. Make sure you're getting every little hair in there. And sometimes if you even, if you have to, Get in there with a little eyelash brush if needed. Whatever it takes to make sure you're kind of going that extra mile for your client and making it feel like a service that they can't do at home, right? This isn't something they're not going to get the same result if they were to do this at home. Okay, and do your best to work around these masks. Pull all these guys back. So we do have a question from Janice on Facebook. Uh, yeah. She's wondering what's the model's natural level. Her natural level is a five. She has, um, and I would say probably about maybe 25% gray. I'm really bad at those numbers, but I would say about 25% gray. But because she's dark, right? She's like a, um, a coarse level five. You know how different um, levels. Like I almost consider myself a level five, six as well, but my hair is finer. So it just doesn't have that same depth to the pigment pigment. Yvette's is very coarse. So level five and very crazy coarse, um, grays popping out. So you can see, I put this extra little piece of foil on and that's going to help lay that gray back away from the face. And then again, I'm going to be pushing and making sure none of these highlights are laying in any of the dark hair, okay? If any of this retouch, if I need to, I'll move it out of my way. And I'm going to keep spinning her and start working on the other side now. Okay, so I'm going to go to my timer here, right? We were mindful about what's happening there. Now I'm going to set a 10-minute timer for here. So obviously being on this live, I, I can't go back and forth and you know, go rinse her if I needed to. Um, but in the salon, if I felt like I needed to get this color off, especially when you guys are first using this color, if you're like, whoa, I think that's going a little dark. Don't hesitate to go and rinse it off. Okay. There's nothing worse than feeling like you just created a big catastrophe for yourself, right? We want our clients to be happy and it would be such a bummer to feel like you have to go back 
and try to uh, shift or move this base in any way. Another great trick that I love to do is if I wasn't giving Yvette a face frame highlight, you can also take a lighter level through the front. So let's say take a 6N, and I believe we have these formulas for you guys. You can do a 6N through the front and a 5N through the back. And that's going to keep that lighter and brighter around her face too. Even if it's just ever so subtle, like let's say she comes in and she's not quite ready for the face frame, then that's what I would do as my little hairline trick through there. So keep kind of pushing this color back and away. And honestly, it's a very fast application, even on your own. Normally at the salon, like I said, I'm working with an assistant on this. So we would have been done and moved on. I'm gonna mix just a little more color here. Um, if I do switch up my colors, I'll use different brushes. So I have a pink brush and a black brush based on, I'll show you guys my pink brush. If I'm using a hairline formula, I'll switch it up. And that just helps my, my assistant and I to keep it consistent, make sure we're applying things quick and efficient. So I've been calling this kind of an express service. Um, and what I love about it is, honestly, I hate doing gray retouches at this lawn. I don't want that to be all day, every day for me. For some of you guys, you absolutely love it. It is great, quick, easy money, right? And if you do, then you're gonna love this even more because now you can get in twice as many clients doing it with this product. Um, for me, I always wanna kind of like elevate and step it up. So I love to be able to add this face frame in and get great coverage. It just feels a little more creative for me and then I'm now upping what I'm charging this client, even though literally what I'm tackling is her gray coverage. That's what she hates. That's what she comes in for. But I'm just going to take it to the next level, give her this face frame, and make her feel extra special, extra fresh. Okay, this last one I'll pull up and away. And make sure we're keeping that off her hairline. So we stay nice and clean through here. And I'm almost done, but I'm gonna show you guys. We'll swipe through the back and show you that it is covered and done. And it's so satisfying. So once I get her shampooed, then we will do a slight little tap on her highlights. And I just do this all at the bowl. So while my client's back at the bowl, we've given her a nice shampoo. We add a little tap and a tone. I'm going to be using Joyco's The Demi, uh, the Demi Cream product, Luma Shine. And I'm going to be using 6SB. That's going to control any leftover warmth in our highlights right at the top. And then I'm going to be using um, 6NW, 10NG, and Clear in that formula for her all over tone. So, in Joico specifically, their colors are very cool. Their N series is very cool, which I love so much because in LA, we do a lot of cool blondes, right? Everybody wants to be ashy. I feel like the trend's slowing down a little bit, but for the most part, people want to be really ashy, you know, ever since our clients learned the word brassy. Now, everything's brassy. Um, so... I will kind of do a balance with the NG in there, and it just gives me a little sparkle. Even if I want her highlights to feel a little more neutral, I don't want them ashy, but I want them to be neutral with a little sparkle to them, and the NG just kind of gives me that little kick. Okay, still pulling this up and away, and watching for those ends, making sure those ends are not hitting any of the depth in the back. Last little spot. Be super mindful with your clients here, taking that time to additionally, the other little trick too is once you get in here and you're, especially when you're working by yourself, use your clips, guys. Use those tools. Make our lives easier. So then I have a free hand. I can get in here and shift her mask and really make sure 
I'm getting all these little babies. She's got literally one little gray in there. And if that was still there, she'd probably see it, right? So being super mindful and detailed with our clients. Okay, going in here, getting all those little babies. All right, I'm gonna do the foil trick here. Sometimes people use um, perm paper too. Um, I just tend to have foil with me most of the time. So I'll do that. Okay, and keeping this clipped in a way and just checking to make sure none of these little guys are laying on any of her dark. You see how we pull all this away. All right, let's give it a test. Let's give her a swipe. And I'm so curious if you guys think it covered or not. Here we go. There we go. Can you guys see that? Full coverage right in there, right? So fast. So to be real with you guys, this sat more than 10 minutes in here, right? So let's go back to our timer. We're at three. We have three more minutes on this side. Let's just see what it's doing. I'm curious, right? I really want to be transparent with you guys. There's lots of color out there, right? We all get to choose what we love best. Um, but at the end of the day, we need to choose what works too, right? So I think it's so important to always be as a professional, always be searching for that next best thing. What's going to help you in the salon? Time is money, right? Time is money, our product. If we have to, if we feel like we have to be applying multiple product, if we feel like we have to be, you know, sitting with a client for 40 minutes, um, all of that makes a difference, right? So finding these tools, doing this type of digital education that you guys are doing, taking the time to learn um, and push yourself as artists is really what's going to help you grow. And I know sometimes that means it's going out of our comfort zone a little bit, but, um, but grab your friends, grab your sisters, grab your moms, grab whatever, and play with this kind of stuff. You know, I have started to mess with this a little bit more and use it as a root shadow. I don't typically root shadow with a permanent color, but I'm curious, what is this going to do for me and my clientele? Will it last longer? Can I highlight through it easily? All those things, just continue to push yourself as an artist um, and using those tools to your advantage. Um, okay, you guys, so I will make sure that I post some before and after photos of Yvette's color. Hopefully you guys see it right here. It's happening and it's working. At 10 minutes, I want to make sure that I get this front washed off because I don't want it to go any deeper than what it's meant to be. I love that this will this will totally be at a level six. She's gonna have some beautiful depth with a five through the back. And if I were in the salon, I would already have gone back now and start rinsing through the back. Um, again, don't forget to check your highlights, open those up, see how they're lifting, and kind of go from there before you decide to even apply through your crown, okay? Knowing where these are about is what's gonna help you with your timing on your base. Um, okay, you guys, so that is it for us. I'm gonna send Yvette off to go get shampooed and we'll get some photos for you guys. Please leave any comments, um, questions, and whoever wins the giveaway, let me know, tag me. I wanna see how you guys love this color. And again, thank you so much for tuning in on your Monday. See you later.